and welcome once again to another amazing quad race for Dragon Warrior Randomizer tonight. We're going to be having a fantastic race where you have uh, Mr. Holmes and Mand versus each other, and F. Coughlin and EMP in the amount. It's going to be a great race. Tonight in the booth with me is Aaron YouTube. Hey, how are you doing? Can't complain, it's been a great evening so far, and yet more racing to get done, so I'm looking forward to this uh, dual head-to-head -head -head competition going on right here. Absolutely, and we're just past the halfway point in the uh, the whole group stage, so these matches, we're starting to see uh, things form, and we're not quite in the desperation stage yet, but uh, it's really difficult to see, um, you know, losing too many more at this point and still being eligible for those bracket races. Most definitely. So we have EMP at 3-0 in his bracket, uh, F. Coughlin 1-2 and in his bracket, and then Man 2-0 in his bracket, and Mr. Holmes 1-1, one and, one, and away we go getting those final instructions from the King. Look at the stats to start. Yeah, strength's a little bit weak, but the agility's kind of nice. No spells. As long as the starting zone isn't too bad. And then, hey, I think we found wings right off the bat. Yep, so there'll be some keys getting kept here. Good thing for that, all you gotta do is get the return spell or have a set of wings and you'll be able to keep that first key. So keys for everyone. And that torch could be nice to take out something in case the starting zone is a little too weak. Maybe you can grab a, a ghost or something like that with it. But we already see F. Coughlin not going directly back in and takes out a slime. Yep, everybody else walking into save to just check that treasury and see what it is. Uh, well, F. Coughlin has decided, you know what, I'm just going to go throw hands with everything and go ahead and try to do my best. And he does, he gets level 2 right off the get-go. Yeah, right away, no hesitation, 5, 0, 2, 4, and Radiant. So he's not going to miss that torch so much now. Nope, that, uh, that big boost in strength is going to help him out quite a bit, and he's able to take out a few more things without having to take torches out to it. Um, he's just got a little ways to his next level. Everybody else, though, look at the armor. The armor looks like some special, spectacular stuff, but I see resets, maybe not so much. Yeah, it's looking like gold, torch, fighter's ring, and I forget what the other thing was, but it wasn't worth uh, saving that key for. However, or losing that key. Holmes is going to check the, the basement real quick. Quick basement check. You never know what's down there. You couldn't end up with a free chest. You could end up with a couple of different things, maybe the uh, Swamp South or something along those lines. Uh, but it could be, you know, a big thing to know right off the get-go. And it looks like it was Swamp North, as he's going directly south, going to see if he can skate through here. However, the, the Magic Wyvern says no, and I probably, yep, there it is, there's the reset. Alright, so he's got that information, here comes F. Coughlin. Uh, I think he was able to pick up maybe a couple of keys, I don't know, but he, we might see a reset on his end here in the second as well. Yeah, I think he got as far as level 2 and died and just decided to check it then. A lot of players will do that, they'll uh, not go immediately back in and just see what the zones outside look like, see if they can spot a town real quick, um, to see if, you know, some sort of, like, gold, losing the key for gold is worth it. Well, he's fixing to take the same track and look around the back side. He's going to find out exactly what's there. Whole lot of nothing for now. Uh, pretty strong area, but we've got Mr. Holmes outside the castle finding some metal scorpions. A great enemy to find, but not at level 1 with six strength. Now, if he had another torch, he could possibly kill one of those, but uh, one torch is not enough. A man hitting level, he's trying to hit level 2. He's got that slime down, so level 2 comes to him. And Fred Coughlin trying to get away from that little, that warlock right there. It's going to be a little ugly, but he gets away. He's getting some good information, even if he's getting sent back. He's seen a Magiwyvern. He's seen a Knight. This could be, uh, if we get early Kurtmore, this could be a good place to grind some levels out. And seeing up on EMPs, Ghosts have Kurtmore. That's never fun to start. Scorpions with the weak breath, man, just ran into one of those. Again, the stats aren't really there to be fighting them anyway. We're pretty much, I think, magicians max right now. Yeah, I haven't seen one of them yet, but we have seen plenty of blue slimes, plenty of red slimes. Well, even a magician, uh, 
you'd be doing like one to two, probably not gonna win that damage raise. I mean, if if you're full HP, maybe, but I'm, I'm seriously doubting that with the uh, the possibility of misses and, uh, and low rolls along those lines. Another hurt more on man though from the ghost. Yeah, in a, if there was something a little bit more useful than one torch in that treasury. I wouldn't be surprised to see somebody sacrifice the key just to, to get out of this beginning area and, you know, take out a, a reasonable enemy and gain a couple of levels. But just one more torch is going to get you one ghost, and that's not really worth it. Well, Fred Coughlin dropping down just a little bit too far south finds a gold man and able to get away, but get a little more exploration knowledge as he moves along here off the coast here. It's about the only time of the game where you uh, will take a fight on a slime and not feel even remotely bad about it. He does see a cave, however. And he's found the free cave, so he's got a free item here, and it is... The Silver Harp, so he's got one bit of homework done already. That is true, there was a fighter's ring in there. The extra two strength would help a little. I, I don't know if I would sacrifice it for just that, though. I don't think we're at a point that that would tilt in favor of being able to kill more of these things. Well, found a blue, found a blue dragon. Was it playing nice? So, yikes. And he's got the harp, and not much he's going to be able to do with that, unfortunately. He could use it, but it's considering the zones, what we've seen, he'd have to be hoping for, like, a red slime. However, did EMP just hit three? Uh, EMP did hit three. It looks like he gained a few points of strength there, a couple of uh, couple of agility, a couple of HP, and some significant magic. Yeah, heal more and hurt more. He doesn't need another spell the rest of the game. Just uh, now, he's we're gonna see this level difference really accelerate. Might just stay into zones one and two right now for safety, but he can kill I'd say 75% of the enemies in the game right now with that spell. Oh, most definitely. And he's heading for that cave that he uh, was kicked out of beforehand. But now he's got hurt more. This uh, actually should go down with no problem. And the hurt nice and hurt, so that's even better. The best possible thing you could see right after getting a hurt more: an axe knight with hurt near a starting zone. Very tasty. So that was a nice level, though. Uh, looks like five seven five seven at hurt. Actually, jumped straight to six. So. I don't know. If I'm him, I might be thinking about just going out to that desert right above that swamp and hoping for the best. Meanwhile, Mand is trying to get this ghost down, he's trying to get a little more experience. As is uh, Mr. Holmes, he's working on level 3, and uh, F. Coughlin is doing the same, sticking to the uh, safe zone around the castle. Right, and as we've seen from EMP, that's the play. Get to level 3, and then... Uh, you know, experience, go room, and you can worry about everything after that. Oh yeah, and he's not hesitating to hit something with Hurtmore right now. He has just enough money, we might see him get the back. Oh, Green Dragons with Hurt? That's another great enemy to see in this scenario. Uh, just early Hurtmore, but nothing he can do about it with no MP. Well, it, a quick death, you can go back and pick up maybe one or two keys, and uh, if, you, if you really had that ink, then you can pick up whatever's in the treasury. Uh, Fighter's Ring with two more attack power is not terrible right now. Yeah, he might check the basement first. I wouldn't be surprised of all the things, though, because um, he can only get the one key. Well, you know what, never mind. He can get gold in the treasury, so he'll get all of his keys maxed out here in a minute. Meanwhile, we have uh, Mr. Coughlin. He has his hurt more now, and he's starting to use it with a vengeance. Uh, looks like Mand has just hit three as well, so he's about to get that wonderful news. And Holmes just behind him. Uh, and it is worth mentioning, we do have one, I believe, deviation from the normal uh, strength HP build that Holmes is running strength agility. So we will see a slight difference in stats. It may or may not matter as the, the game goes along. That's definitely something to keep an eye on. Uh, but Drakima taking hurt more. I mean, everything right now is just hurt more, hurt more, hurt more. This is going to be a fun scene to watch now. 
Yeah, MP agility is a strength agility build. I just saw, I just realized that too. So here we go. People are just starting to throw hurt ones out at some of these bigger enemies. Uh, you see Mr. Holmes playing around with that Axe Knight. He's got hurt, but he should be able to finish him off with another shot. EMP going through the basement. He does not check the uh, swamp tile there, choosing to go straight through. And he didn't see. Well, never mind. There is the knight. He's gonna see if he saw any of the good enemies down here, but uh, sees one right before the end. Well, Coughlin finding uh, Sherlock, so he has that knowledge. Took the death, went back, and now I think we're probably gonna see a key play for him as well. If he has some money, he does not. Had it before the death. Now on the other side of Swamp, we see a town almost immediately, and it is Grinham having those keys. These are three free chests, and uh, EMP is going directly to them, not checking the shop, not stopping the feeling. He's got a feeling. But hey, death necklace for the first one. The next one is fairy water, and the last chest is an herb. So not god-awful, but not great either. Right, and now he's coming back to check these things. I think he realized there wasn't anything he was going to do with the money anyway. Uh, but yeah, we see a chainmail purchase that makes a lot of sense with the uh, resources he has. Um, can't really buy anything else, but that you almost have the best stuff that money can buy there in Grinham. So if we do a gold grind later, we might see him come back through here. Yeah, we're going to see that, that first belt sale. So we'll probably see maybe a dragon scale and some herbs. Uh, just to up that up and pad that defense just a little bit. I know you get a free one, but sometimes it's one it's not worth the wait. And you got that uh, that cursed belt money, so that's something. Uh, we'll see if he saves it for the club. I know there's a lot of f club fans in chat who might want to see that, but uh, it looks like oh, torch exactly 60. It looks like that's what he's doing. Yeah, if he picked up that Dragon Scale, he's going to get the two extra defense points there. That'll help him at least take a point or so more off of the damage that he's been taking. Ah, uh, no, he didn't buy the club. Sorry, be focused on that. That's just... It's that the meme weapon that everybody wants, and unfortunately didn't get it. But we are going to see the back of gear in him now. Let's see what we have as far as connecting caves or anything along those lines. While we're doing that, we did just see F. Coughlin meet up with a DL2 Spectre. It looks like everyone else has settled into grinds in and around the uh, beginning zone. And we have Grave in the back of Gearing Man. Is this even randomized? I guess there's a 1 in 8 chance that Garen dies in Garen. Well, unfortunately, the Wraith Knight has DL2 sends EMP home. That was a little harsh. A little extra on the ouch there. Over the uh, the grind zones I've seen, and I haven't seen too much, but it looks like some of these beginning enemies that you'd be able to hurt more out, the Sherlock ones, are not cooperating. I've seen both Star Wyverns and Green Dragons with Heal More, which is a very uncomfortable spell to see on them when you're at very low attack levels. I like man's play, he hit repel and went straight to that southern desert where all these axe knights are sitting at. A good play on his part, that way he can try to get the more expensive uh, experienced enemies, try to boost his levels up just a little bit before he continues forward. An EMP taking the somewhat unusual, still effective, gold grind via Grinham three chests and then dying <laughs> without taking anything in grave. So it looks like he's going to take that money, probably save it, and load up on equipment as soon as he gets back through. Well, we did see Flame and Silver Shield, uh, I believe, in gear in him, so he knows that information, he can head right back over, pick those two items up, and then he's in really, really good spot. But so far, I mean, EMP's the only one to have seen gear in him thus far. Right, F. Coughlin is the first one who I think has went through the swamp on the left side. We'll see if we find any sort of exploration over here as he picks up level 6. So kind of looking at it, nobody's really like super ahead. I mean, we still have some pretty close uh, experience runs here, but 
Uh, looks like F. Coughlin is catching some definite exploration uh, information, which is going to come in key if he doesn't have to go back that break in the vaccine. Yeah, he might not be finding anything, but that in itself is something. Just knowing where the, the walls are can uh, help with further exploration, but he's still killing a few things. It looks like Holmes still has the experience lead. Uh, has been able to take down more of these level or more of these higher level enemies and picks up level eight. And judging from chat, he did not pick up enough from the gold grind to get both silver shield and sword. So, is he going for armor and and shield? What do we got here? I think it's interesting just abandoning the the flame sword. You have no idea what sort of odds there are for the sword to be in the overworld yet. We've seen one cursed belt, and uh, yeah, very interesting to go that far in and not think about that. Well, we'll see. He's on his way through somewhere. Meanwhile, man taking a death to the blue dragon. Um, Dr. Holmes seeing that same blue dragon, he's going to go ahead and just take the death too. Yeah, level 9 had a ton of stats. I think he got, like, double digits in almost everything, so level 9 might be walking around stats. And the, the threshold to uh, go full exploration when you have hurt more tends to be a little bit lower than normal. But now it looks like he's uh, still kind of in that same area, so you know, never mind yep. me. He's going to go in for a little bit more. Uh, looking up at EMP, he did buy the silver, but he did not have enough or anything else got the full plate. Uh, so we'll just have to kind of see what his plan is from here on out. Got him a little defense power, so he's able to defense, start defense breaking some things. Um, and now he's going to go back in the back of Grave again and then see what happens with this one. Be almost surprised if he picked up the three chests again just in case he uh, met an immediate death and might go to grab for the, uh, the flame sword. But uh, no, I think he's not going to be worried about that. With Hurtmore, you don't really need it for a while. But it's just always, I always think the flame sword is not an early gameplay as much as it is a late gameplay. Well, then you see something like that red dragon right there. He's not going to let you get away, so there's that death we were just talking about. Yes, uh, this this news just breaking. Uh, Mountain 1 is terrible. Or, excuse me, Grave 1. Red dragons and also Wraith Knights with DLT death. Yep, it's a super spicy meatball there tonight, so it's going to take a little bit. Maybe Mountain 2 won't be, or uh, Grave 2 won't be so bad. Yeah, and as uh, Kigalus mentioned in chat, that also means Mountain 2 is terrible. That's the one, that, that's the zone that you're in for quite a while, so we'll see if it matters. Demon Knight, however, is a little bit beyond EMP's capabilities, but he gets away. Meanwhile, we see Man recharging that MP, uh, hitting level 8. He's going to find out here in just a second that the uh, level 9 is even better. Uh, meanwhile, EMP and Coughlin both sitting around level 6. Um, we do have EMP, though, just hitting level 7. So we got a little bit of a boost there. And it appears that F. Coughlin is trying to grind inside of the uh, swamp basement. Again, we saw a few enemies there that are really good for hurt more, and you can probably withstand a hit. It looks like he either didn't see the, the good stuff in the southern area that Mand and Holmes have been in, or he just didn't want to... Like, there were, there were some bad enemies in there as well that maybe he didn't want to deal with. Yeah, you've got, the, you've got the Axe Knights that typically can go down on one shot, then you've got the Blue Dragons which do take two, uh, and they're not being nice tonight at all. So, yeah, I think this is a, this is a pretty good call on his part. F. Coughlin getting through and finding Grinham as well, so I feel like we might see the same sort of thing on his end happen that what EMP did, except maybe he gets the flame sword again. We might be overrating how important that is. Uh, meanwhile, EMP does find the staff of Rain Cave. He apparently had the harp at some point, so now he has full staff. Yeah, because the silver harp was in that cave just down there where uh, Holmes has been grinding all uh, evening on this map. Um, so everybody did get it. He does have a staff of ring now, so he's good to go as far as that. Uh, meanwhile, we see the fighter's ring going on, and looks like the dragon's scale going on for uh, Coughlin. 
Yeah, the uh, talking about the axe knights being in there, you know, it is a great grind. But the one question I would have is, what's on that spike tile? Because if that's an axe knight, then you you were you know going down just a little bit over what you could have had, but it still seems pretty good. Like that zone looked like it was forty percent because he wasn't having to walk too much and he wasn't finding much else. Man, finding out the information that south is as far as you go. There's Sherlock, just waiting for you. That'll be an easy walk from start whenever it's time to go. Alright, so man is going to give this blue dragon a shot at level 8. He's got enough HP, but it finds out the disgusting news of Healmore. And here goes the spike. It is a red dragon spike garden the princess. Gross. Yeah, that's no good. You don't want anything to do with that. Uh, so he gets away. We'll see if F. Coughlin has any better luck with Grave 1 than EMP has had. It isn't that far to those two chests, but one step in and Red Dragon. And you know, kind of at this point, you're like, well, this is going to be interesting. I mean, you've got a Red Dragon spike on one, and you still have a couple of things out there. Um, you know, Cantlin is going to be a huge find once they get a, once they get a hold of it. Because if that uh, if those coordinates are way out there, the princess is going to have to get rescued, and it's going to be gross. F. Coughlin is trying to melee down a poltergeist and gets it, but that was a very dodgy and trolly poltergeist. So uh, we'll see if he gets these three chests. Probably just hoping for his best. And first token, second dragon scale, which he already has. So pause while we wait on this. And some gold. Having seen what's in Grinham, I would not be surprised if F. Coughlin is wanting the Death Warp now to get those goods. If he can get an early Silver Shield, that can be uh, race-changing. Indeed. I mean, you see EMP, he's got that 56 defense points. He's not worrying near as much as everybody else is as far as the damage he's taken. Right. But we do have a weapon on, looks like, Mr. Holmes. Uh, has a weapon, and it looks like... No, he doesn't. That's just his hand. Holy... Oh, my. Oh, I just missed what that fourth, fourth chest and grave was. Did anybody in chat see it? Empty. Okay, so it was a uh, herb or a key. Probably an herb. It looks like everybody's trickling into gear in hand and dropping the grave and see what's there. Uh, Coughlin, though, is on his way to that last little ch uh, last chest to see what's down here at the bottom. See if the dive is worth it. Still going in again. Holmes getting the three things that uh, F. Coughlin I just saw. Dragon scale, token, and gold. So... Token's a pretty good pickup. We'll see if there's anything in Deep Grave. Uh, hopefully, F. Coughlin is almost there. Holmes is on his way, but meeting that red dragon again. And gold at the bottom of the grave, not what you want to see. However, Holmes does not get through. That might be a blessing in disguise, seeing what is actually in the basement of the grave. It looks like I would not be surprised if we see him and F. Coughlin both hit that gold grind right away and just get uh, get the money. Yep, that red dragon is pretty punchy right now, but yeah, I, de <clears throat> I definitely think you'll see the uh, fire sword and silver shield play here on that top one, uh, as well as look like possibly manned here, and as well as Holmes as well. So these guys should be gearing up here just a second. You do wonder a little bit about EMP not being able to get through that first floor and grave. You die twice, you're not feeling good about that. You might not go back for a while. That could be a problem if uh, you stumble across, like if you get those stones and you just stumble across something, uh, uh, the, uh, the jerk cave somewhere, and it's a long distance away and have to double up that trip. Most definitely. Still got to get that token. Uh, but yeah, we're seeing gold grinds on all three of our other runners, Man Holmes and F. Coughlin. Uh, getting ready to go pick up at least 
Flame Sword and Silver Shield if they all saw everything correctly. Yes, I believe if my math serves me correctly, which it sometimes does, we're looking at around 27 to 28,000 gold to get all three of the best things that you can find in Granham. Most definitely, and up to NG bringing up a good point. You're going to want that flame sword for the red dragon later. Yep, that is a no brainer, no doubt on that one. And it was mentioned that man, when he found the red dragon, had hurt. Considering I haven't seen it yet, it's probably a really low percent, so I don't know if that's going to be reliable. But if man is the only one that's seen that, that could be some bad info on his part. He might be trying to fight them and hoping to see those hurts and then not get them. Because it kind of feels like 25 to 50% at best. And our first runner is off with the gold. Mr. Holmes has shot out of there like a cannon. It looks like getting ready to come up right behind him is Coughlin. And then uh, Man will be right behind that as well. We see EMP heading back into gearing him. He's going to go give us another shot. F. Coughlin going all the way through. 33,000. He must be still hoping for the magic armor somewhere. Or he forgot exactly what was in Granham and just remembered it was, you know, good things. Trademark. So he just decided to cover all of his bases. Yeah, because there wasn't a whole lot. I mean, we haven't we have really seen a lot of the map outside of here in him because everybody's just been you know, gotta get to the grave, gotta get to the grave, gotta get to the grave. And Holmes almost through mountain. It's not too far out of here. Or excuse me, through swamp. It's not too far to the next to uh, Grinham, but it is a little scary that he didn't save, but it didn't matter. He got there. So that's a, a, effectively a time save. Yeah, so we should see a uh, full plate, flame sword, and silver shield purchase right here to get him up and going. It is interesting how all three of them grab different amounts of money. And uh, F. Coughlin went a little overboard. Holmes is just about right. Mand is slightly short for all three things. So he might have to uh, skip out on the armor for now. Although the full plate, good. You can, it, you're can. you not dead without it. That silver shield's going to come in huge, though, because, I mean, now everybody's got one that's going to at least make the late-game defense up there as long as the agility kind of works with us a little bit. Um, and, of course, looking at Mr. Holmes, uh, you know, 43 agility right now with 67 defense power is not terrible with the armor that he's kind of pulled out. Now, when you just pick up level 11, we'll see if this level has anything useful, and it looks like 2644, four, you know, all single digits. You'll take the 6 agility because that is kind of our lagging stat right now. Honestly, the stats aren't too bad for 11. Nope, you're already at 70 defense power and 66 magic, so you're starting to get up there. Uh, your stats are starting to climb a little bit. Um, and you've got a couple of decent places to get a decent grind in. And there is Man finding the same place that Mr. Holmes has. He's in Cantlin. He's going to go take a look and probably get these coordinates to see if he has to get from this. And neither of them in a position where they can just walk through without having to expend a lot of resources. Although Holmes did cast Repel before he did this, so he might be thinking of a warp back, but probably not because the old man has no coordinates to give you today. Thou shalt go and fight. And F. Coughlin as well. He's going to check all the shops. He might be looking for that magic armor. Did he buy the full plate? Yeah, he bought the full plate, so never mind. He can't do anything with that anyway. He's already spent the money. Yeah, he's fixing to find out the bad news just as everybody else has. Uh, so, it is what it is. I mean, we're, we're moving and shaking at this point. These guys have got at least a start out the door now. Uh, we've seen a little bit more of the map. It's, uh, it's going to be interesting now, because now you know there's at least one one search spot uh, due to the curse belt we found. So we know there's no coordinates. That's looking more like stuff being inside of Charlotte. And to answer a question from chat, they are all on the same seed. 
they have different race rooms, so they won't have any information when the other someone from the other race finishes. However, uh, they did all agree to run on the same seat. It, I don't know how we would manage to do this if they weren't, because I, have, I sometimes have a hard enough tracking one race when I'm the only one watching one person myself, and uh, let alone tracking two different races at the same time. So, hot take from chat there. Holmes is going after the Red Dragon. He's going to see if he can knock him down. If he does, this is going to be huge for him. You say that, EMP actually killed one just a little bit ago. Uh, with no weapon. It's not often you can slap a red dragon to death, but he did it. Well, and now that you know that the red dragon spike, or the red dragon, uh, is down there in spike, Kyle, on the, or where the princess is, it's not a terrible grind later, uh, if you're, if you're needing to go past 16 or anything like that. And again, all depending on how your strength decides to play out. Oh, stone men would hurt more. Yikes. Yeah, the the best Holmes just already executed the best way to handle those red dragons though, which is you know just crit. And EMP finding another red dragon, unfortunately, is not able to give him hardly any business right now because he didn't pick up a sword, but he has got the Hakai for sixty three with them hands. You don't need a weapon if you just crit every time. Chat saying he did by a broadsword, okay. Well, there's the town of Rimmeldar in EMP's screen up there. Yeah, he's gonna check out the Rimmeldar lottery. Let's see if it winds up being what it usually is, which is nothing useful. And it's fairy water, so the old man is storing some fairy water for a rainy day. And doesn't help out EMP at all. Yeah, big nothing. Unfortunate for him, but we pr probably every other player is going to do the same thing at some point. You know, that that's how they get you. That's how uh, Rimmeldar stays in business. Just uh, cheat me on the old lottery. Well, and there we go. We just saw Coughlin uh, turn in his heart or his heart for the staff, so he has the staff now. Uh, meanwhile, everybody else is still kind of trying to settle into grinds and whatnot. Uh, F. Coughlin is working on a green dragon. And Holmes got the staff, I'm sorry. Yeah, the green dragons don't feel like a bad grind. The one thing here is that we've seen already that they have heal more. It must not be at a very high rate, though. Uh, hurt and heal more still doesn't feel bad, but uh, it's not quite as good as the Axe Knight that was up there um, a little bit ago. Holmes saying, you know what, I've got this sword, I might as well test out a few things. Taking a wizard down for a hundred. It's always nice when that swamp goes a little too far, you gotta check to get that dead end and just take some extra damage, and then they're like, thanks, thanks, McGrew, for this map. Well, looking at home screen, he's got another town and cave. We found Hawksness, and this should be uh, a quick spike check here. We've seen Red Dragon on one spike, which looks like a pretty good grind. Let's see if we get another good one. And that is the, Yes, that is the opposite of a good one. Stone Man with Hurt War. Let me see. Unfortunately, it's the Stone Man, and he is not playing nicely whatsoever. Hurt War might make this difficult to take down with his Heal Wars. He's still not hitting quite that hard, and... Uh, with his defense, the Hurt more is definitely doing more damage than uh, its normal attacks would do. But he's going to try this out. He's already invested, so let's see what happens. So he threw a Hurt more at the Stone Man and got it, and his final swing is enough to take it down. And completely worth what he, what he went for. He got the sword out of that one. So now he's got the big stick swinging. Yeah, definitely love to see that after that sort of fight. Knowing a lot of players in the same situation might not be able to get what he got out of it. Again, he did miss once, but 
uh, getting that part more to land. It's, it's 7 out of 16 resist, so it's not terrible, but you still feel a little bit awkward doing it, I think. Uh, looks like he's heading back in that direction to go see what was in that cave since he took the death in there. Um, meanwhile, F. Coughlin finding that little spot that he just really didn't have to go into. Uh, looks like, the, as did Man, and then another Red Dragon sending EMP home. It looks like we have a little bit of exploration going on. F. Coughlin manned almost on identical spots. Uh, so they might both come across Hawksness here pretty quickly, too. And we'll see what they do. Again, no sleep makes the Stone Man fight a little awkward. That hurt more makes it a little bit more lethal than it normally is. Yeah, we've got a couple of people in a couple of the same spots. Then we have Man looking at Hawksness in that cave at Hawksness. So he's about to find out what's there. At level 24, or excuse me, level 12 was massive. I believe that was... Uh, something around 24 and 34 for hit points and MP. So that's basically in-game stats as far as those two go. Especially for Holmes, who doesn't have a, a plus on either of those. So wouldn't be surprised to see when the other players manage to get the 12. We might be considering Death Necklace already. Well, we have uh, F. Coughlin heading into uh, the Stone Man fight here. Hopefully he's got some resources still so he can find out the bad news and see how he's going to play around this. Meanwhile, homes and mountain, again, the only things we're missing right now are armor and stones of the required items. We still also could have the flute out there, so we don't know for sure what coal might have. We still haven't found it. Uh, but we've only seen one curse belt, so we don't know if it's guaranteed. And there's the stones and mountain. Speaking of coal, EMP also just finds the flute there. Man, so it's it's looking more and more like something might be in Sherlock if we're not careful. We're about to find out there's these last few chests. One to go in Mountain Cave. With our uh, perfect global knowledge, that's the last chest because F. Coughlin just went through Tablet. And I don't think he found anything. Not what you want to see. First belt, which means... You want the armor, guess where you're going. Alright, we've already seen Stone's Cave, we've already seen Tablet, we've seen Olive Mountain, we've seen Coal, we've seen Grenham, we've seen everything. Unless uh, Breconary has smuggled something in, uh, armor is in Sherlock. Yeah, and I'm going to guess Judge's Table because it's where I go every single time. It's what I do. Home sees Tablet Cave and nopes out of it immediately. He's gonna... He, I think he is just gonna try for coal to try to get that armor. He's gonna be disappointed. Um, but we'll see if he ever goes back, because he might just assume that it's in Charlock and not bother with that guy. I mean, this is a really high uh, aggressive play, but it's not to the unexpected. Well, I mean, you, you've got the you've got the seven on one mentality right there. You've got seven chests in Sherlock. You've got one in the in the uh, tablet cave. I think you play the odds here. Didn't you just say that you always go to a uh, table first, and you're talking about the odds? I, I did indeed. I I never said that I believe in the odds. I just say you, you sometimes play the odds. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's fair. I mean, I've been trolled by Judge's Table so many times, it's like, you know what, that's my first check, it's close. Sometimes it's genius, and sometimes it's not. It's, uh, you know, you just you feel really smart when it happens. Well, the only thing left for Mr. Holmes to do is find the jerk. And then he can go and rainbow drop in and maybe take a look at Sherlock, poke around a little bit. Um, he's also got to at least settle down for a grind here pretty soon, too. Yeah, he's got a little bit to go, but that grind, the, uh, the swamp underneath Tantajo with the Red Dragon, I don't imagine he's going to get too far from that, unless he really wants these Axe Knights in this area. Man is getting hit pretty hard. He had to run away from that fight. Oof. Not what you want to see. 
Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what EMP did. He ran away and then immediately went back in to fight it and just died. I don't know if he just decided, you know what, let's just reset this whole thing or whatever, but it was a, a interesting decisions. Well, Holmes is on his way somewhere. I'm just not sure where just yet. Uh, looks like he may just be uh, grinding out in that little area down there, finding what he can. Uh, meanwhile, you know, Coughlin is roaming around trying to find a couple more things, looks like. Uh, we do have level 11 on the main screen. Yeah, all of our players are basically waiting on 12. That's the next really good level. You know, we might not even have another really good level after that because everyone's stats are kind of in the range that double digits would be pretty, pretty huge. Most definitely. Um, and look at the look at Mr. Holmes. He's got 116 max HP at this point. All he's doing is looking for the jerk, and he just hasn't found him yet. I think it's the only thing we haven't seen, is it? Uh, that and Breconary, which in itself might be called the jerk as well. It's a jerk for a whole different reason. Unless that was the town that F. Coughlin just left. I didn't recognize it, but I also don't recognize the town he's going into, and that's Breconary. So that other one must have been Cole. Well, we've got the, uh, we've got Breconary. Yay! So now we just need the jerk. It's the only thing missing right now. Yeah, I have not seen it on anyone's stream yet, where, uh, it may be lost to the world, hidden around an extremely long isthmus, going, uh, all the way around the entire map, something fun like that would be, uh, be great. So far, everything's just kind of getting their own little grind on here. And EMP finally gets past that dirty, dirty stone man, gets his sword picked up. So we're good to go for him. He's out of there. And that's uh, a little bit more important for him than uh, some of the others because he didn't have the flame sword, but, you know. And speaking of that, F. Coughlin does find the jerk cave, so it does exist. And from and the looks of it. It looks, like it looks like exactly what you said. It was on some long little spot of an island, and they just happened to come across it. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see if Holmes gets there fairly soon, because he's in that Cole Breconary area, and F. Coffin was there just a minute ago. Lots of use of Repel on everybody's screens, trying to get those stronger monsters to come on out. Bad news of the flute and Cole, but he picks it up. Bold move. See a quick repel from Holmes, quick rest, and looks like he's going to be on his way out the door to go do some more searching. Hopefully, though, uh, if he heads just a little further north and, and I believe the, the west a little bit, he should find what he's looking for. Meanwhile, he sees Breconary, he goes in. Or you know what? I don't think he's seen Remolder either. So that might also be lost to a few of our players. The only person I recall that I think might have been EMP. Well, there it is. Holmes found it. So he now has that swift advantage of being able to get into Sherlock right now. And with the HP and the resources he's got, he should be able to at least get down where he wants to go and try to check that on. Looks like he still likes this zone of all these random Charlock enemies over here. Maybe he's not a big fan of the Red Dragons. Uh, maybe he is going directly into Charlock to do an armor dive right now. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I think he's got enough resources here. He should be able to make the, the walk in and be able to uh, do what he needs to. But he's only got one herb, so he's going to be completely reliant on what magic he's got left. Well, if you're swinging all the way down, the worst that happens here is that uh, you have to do it again. But if you're getting tons of experience, it doesn't feel too bad. Meanwhile, Mand over here working on a red dragon. He gets the deal more in. He got that level 12, so he's got 126 HP currently. Yeah, level 12 is just shy of what you might call comfortable death necklace territory. 
Um, but I think 13 gave just enough hit points to, to bridge that gap. Yeah, and seeing, uh, seeing Mr. Holmes, his HP total versus man's HP total, who, uh, has a completely different build, uh, it's, it's significant between level 12 and 13, just 12 and 13. We see yet another Sherlock enemy with the spell of hurt, but however, this golem also has sleep. Uh, if you had stop spell, this could be better than using the fairy flute, possibly, but it is a bit of MP. Probably better just to the flute and swing if you're going to be dedicated to this. And, you know, we talk about dive and grind for things. The, uh, the one thing to note here is that he's only on level 13, so the experience is going to come pretty fast. He doesn't have to kill a whole lot to get the 14. We're not looking at, you know, 3,000 experience per level just yet. Unfortunately, that sleep is playing really horribly on Mr. Holmes, uh, but he's going to put him back to sleep, hopefully heal up real quick, and then go right back at him. Uh, the one good thing about thinking about stop spell strats on a golem is that compared to all the other Sherlock enemies, their maximum possible stop spell resistance is actually kind of low at only 6. Uh, because of the, the way that the uh, stop spell stuff is calculated, it goes by enemy rank, and golems are expected to be earlier in the game via the people who made it than how we have it. And that was a little disgusting, going from golem to red dragon in just a couple of steps. Uh, so he's going to just grind this out and get this quick level 14. You know, the stats can't uh, can't hurt too bad, right? <laughs> and it dodges him, of course. Uh, the, the, the big question will be if he's able to continue this. He might end up doing what uh, I've done and I've seen some other people do, where they just walk far enough to the damage tile to search it to remove the, uh, the stairway and then, you know, die or bolt out. <laughs> Well, we'll see momentarily what he decides to do. He's pretty close now. Took some damage there, but I don't think we're going to bounce out of here. I think we're going to at least make a look. See what the, at least the floors. See what they look like as far as uh, walking through. And at some point, he might feel aggressive enough to just run from everything. I don't think he's there yet stat-wise. That's a real big risk at 60 agility with reds. But it is a thought some people might do. And, uh, yeah, it looks like he's, he's gonna go in for a little ways. Beta Strip bring up a good point. The stairs will remove a damage tile in subsequent visits, and it'll matter when you actually go for that dive for the armor. So, yeah, that's one less, one less barrier tile you gotta worry about. I think I did that in one race in last year's summer tournament, and I remember the uh, people on comms being completely confused, and I was chuckling a little bit. You know, in the watch back. Well, so far we've got Mr. Holmes making uh, just a educated dive here, looking to see what we can find, see what we can uh, see what pops out on each floor. Uh, so far, though, a little bit of red dragon lizards. If you're wondering about what Holmes is doing, and maybe maybe considering how close Tantagel is, you just want to grind the levels on the red dragon and then dive without doing a separate dive. The, the problem you have is that there's damage outside of Sherlock on the way to Sherlock too. So it not isn't just that you're taking damage from the damage tiles and you don't have magic armor, so you can't um, get that little bit of heal walking. You're also uh, taking about, 12, I'd say around 30 points of damage to the swamp outside, which is uh, just gonna make it a little bit more annoying. Most definitely, man just found him a little, uh little island area there. Doesn't go to anything, but he finds a wyvern, so it's a quick takedown with the sword he's got. Uh, meanwhile, an armored knight playing with Mr. Holmes. And yes, as Chad is pointing out, level 14, I believe, was one point of agility and three hit points or something like that. It was absolutely terrible. Gross. Sneaky, you're not wrong. He's heading for the basement. Meanwhile, I believe EMP has picked up the last of the turn-in items that he needs. So we might see him head over to the... Uh... Well, I don't think he's seen where the Jerk Cave is either, so he might have to do some exploration yet. Yep, so far the only two that have found the Jerk is um, Coughlin and Holmes. Everybody else is still searching for that. And still searching for a decent uh, dig and grind here. 
And as up to and G is pointing out in chat, the uh, the death necklace is in play for the HP strength builds, which narrows the go level considerably. However, even at 14, even with that, that's only 117 AP max. We're still not really in, in a place where it's to be considered. We'll have to just see what happens after this to see if uh, the build matters, you know, at all. Meanwhile, F. Coughlin has found Mountain Cave. He's going to find the new... There's not a lot you're looking for in here except those stones. Well, I believe that's the last of his uh, important information. He still hasn't taken out the uh, the enemy in Hawksness. I think he... Did he get there? I think he got there and had the bolt uh, one way or another. So we still have that outlined for him as far as the exploration goes. And then I think to just kind of round it out, I think Mand is just missing this, uh, these stones in Mountain 2. So everything is starting to con converge into one spot. Uh, it's looking like at least 15 or 16 is going to have to be the go. Um, I'm hoping that we get some decent stats here on, on 15. We're going to need a little more strength at least. Um, I know Death Necklace will probably be in play for a few of these guys, but uh, still going to need some strength here. Yeah, and if you are, and just focusing on the bottom race here, uh, since Holmes is kind of in the lead over everyone right now, what man really needs is for those hit points to not go up. He needs that to stay down. He needs strength to not go up very much so that Holmes might have to go even more levels, more than one level above, because the difference right now is very significant. Yeah, Holmes is settling in for that Red Dragon grind, which is not a terrible play for here. Um, you know, you're right under the castle. I'll take it. All day, every day. Yeah, and uh, to piggyback on what chat is saying again, I'm not surprised that he skipped Deep Grave. You know, he tried it once, and it sent him back, and he hasn't went back. I am surprised he skipped Tablet, just because he was right there. But um, it, ultimately, no Tablet had nothing, so it was the right call. You know, unless he doubts himself and goes back, but I can't see that happening. No, I think what you'll see from him is we'll, we'll look and see what 15 gives. If 15 gives a decent bit here. Well, 3 power, 1 speed, 4 HP, and 3 magic with heal, so yeah, not great. No, it looks like this, uh, this seat has been sponsored by Big Grind. Uh, when you think of Dragon Warrior Analyzer, think of Big Grind. Yeah, so all we have now is just the stones from man. Everybody else, uh, we've got EMP who's found the jerk. Uh, we've got Coughlin who just got back to the jerk. So those two are looking pretty head-to-head -head right now. Um, there's a level difference between the two of them, so it's going to be who decides to stick in for a grind and uh, try to get this going here. Uh, again, right now EMP is the uh, head person on that race, where Holmes has the definite advantage and lead on the bottom race. All right, now uh, F. Coughlin really just needs to get the Hawksness and needs to get that sword. I don't know what other exploration he still has to do. I seem to think. He full cleared grave before, so he probably doesn't have anything. EMP now going in to try to get the princess finally has found Cantlin and is going to get the bad news, and we'll probably see him either heading to a grind or heading to Sherlock. So, chat pointing out with his 124 HP. With the Death Necklace on, we'll drop him down to 93 HP. He's still going to need some HP to get that, at least a safe Death Necklace uh, piece for this one. Yeah, there, there are times where you'll see people go at that sort of stat, but uh, he would have to have a lot higher defense stat, like a ton of agility, I think, to consider it. I don't think, uh, especially with this grind, which is probably... Um, better than he might have realized, just considering some of the other things he's been looking at. These red dragons are going down pretty, pretty nicely. 
looking at. I don't remember exactly what that hurt range is. I don't know if uh, one of our tractors might want to pop that up, but uh, they haven't. Um, uh, he's been just mowing through them and gaining tons and tons of experience. Yes, thank you. A whopping 25% on the hurt, so that isn't uh, it isn't really slowing him down too much. But no other spell, nothing else that's interfering. And uh, you know, meanwhile, EMP is diving. Sherlock is going in. We'll see if he starts to run from things and doesn't get experience and doesn't make it. That's where uh, F. Coughlin definitely the the whole race might swing back in his direction. Yeah, Coughlin got the sword and is now uh, stop spelling the uh, stone man so that that hurt more doesn't hit me as often, which was a good move because he seems pretty dependent upon it. And we will see if the uh, the taking no fights and diving for the armor, if this winds up uh, being more successful than Holmes' initial dive. Holmes did get quite a bit of experience on the way down. Uh, the big question is if EMP can get there, because uh, his stats are still pretty low. That agility is almost... It's not quite dead meat st status when it comes to running from reds, but he's looking at probably taking two hits on average. Or he's just going to fight through them like this one. Swing, swing, swing. That's uh, that's the definite go mo or the definite go of uh, Sherlock at this point. With the Red Dragon to be his problem on the first two floors. <laughs> and Holmes picking up level sixteen, which had a decent amount of MP, I think, or no, it had a, a decent amount of agility for him. But that was about it. So level sixteen ain't it either. It ain't it for anybody. Um, and we're gonna see a little bit more fighting here. Yeah, the the 125 HP there is just right at the tail end of the range, which you might consider death necklace, but that attack power is only 111. You're still really short. Yeah, you would need something like another 40 MP or so uh, to be able to compensate for that, and that's even with a full slot of fairy waters. I don't think he's even considering anything but killing some more of these red dragons. And Coughlin seems to be stuck on the Stone Man grind. He's using the stop spell. Uh, he's able to get a couple of shots in here and there. He's not taking as much damage. Um, not a favorite of mine as far as the grinding goes. This red dragon grind that Holmes is doing is just the amazing play right now. Right. It's possible F. Coughlin is just staying here because he's here and just trying to see if he can get as many levels with his resources, thinking this might be better than abandoning it for something else uh, but it does not you know, 155 experience for all this effort it's hard to say this is working out well compared to this red dragon fight well man is on his way looks like he's got everything he needs now uh, he's just got to go pick up the stuff from the jerk meanwhile still red gra uh, red dragon grinding for Holmes we still have some uh, stone men grinding for F. Coughlin and we still have a pretty decent run to the bottom here EMP is finally on the decision for it. Let's see which direction he's going to go. Now he's having to struggle a little bit with these AK-47s. His MP is in that kind of dangerous territory where you don't really feel like fighting things anymore. And uh, unfortunately, he's not getting any any good uh, luck from the, uh, the, the game right now and deciding to just hurt more of the thing. Hurt more to swing sometimes is better than just trying to run and continuously fail to run. Uh, but it's 172, so he's going to pick up level 14. He'll get some decent stats out of that and get at least a little further than that. And it looks like F. Coughlin has had enough of the Stone Man. He's making his way out. Does he have any other exploration? It doesn't look like it. If he's casting Return... I think he's thinking Red Dragon at this point, but has I he seen it? I'm not sure if he's seen it, um, but we got past the Armored Knight, now we're at the decision floor. Oh, he gets it again! He's swinging. I do know if he's still swinging. I, I don't know. I think that isn't a terrible hit point range to swing on, but I'm going to heal more, and then two more swings or one hurt more, and then you're just... Uh, 
dead meat, you know. It's uh, it's not a, a positive situation, but if he goes down his own three and it has no reds, maybe he's okay. I think that would factor into my decision here, too, is that you've seen AKs in zone two. Maybe you do not want to keep in that zone going to the, uh, the judges' table location. A very valid point. I mean, you've seen what's, what you've run into thus far. I think you take your chances with, you know, six chests, and that's what he's going to do here. He's off past the U4, into the straight floor, and down to the Dragon Lord's two layer. So let's see what happens when we get these chests going on here. Yeah, and while we're looking at that, Holmes gets a very thick level 17, is in a, a healthy go mode. Um, the big question will be if he's able to get uh, the stat, or to get there without losing too many humors. And Eldritch Armor on that very first chest. So EMP, the only one with Eldritch Armor right now. Nicely done for him. 17, though. Look at that, man. That is just amazing. 121 attack power. You get that... Uh, you get that uh, tasty death necklace put on. It should be in good shape for this one. He's, uh, you know, looking at the stats with the death necklace equipped, he's probably plus two heal more to what you would want in this scenario, minimum. Uh, which he might lose just going in there. Did he purchase herbs? Does he have any of those? Or is he going to have to rely on those heal mars for all of his healing? I'm not sure yet. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens as he gets further down. Uh, meanwhile, EMP still in that uh, bottom floor, just kind of poking around, seeing what's there. And so you pick an agility build, you want that extra agility for Sherlock so that you don't have to get run stopped by stone men, which is exactly what happened. And with this strat, yeah, he's repelling whatever he can and uh, just kind of going and running with it to get these berry piles. Uh, meanwhile, we have EMP, who I think is heading over either to the spike tile or is just messing around, like I said, getting what he can with what he has left. Yeah, the way that Holmes is using the magic, I don't think he's leaning towards this being a single dive. Uh, he's already burned through quite a bit already. I think he's just going to rush and grab it and then come back. Well, there's Coughlin at 14. He just got 14 on the Red Dragon grind. Uh, Holmes just tearing Red Dragons apart at this point as well. It looks like Mand is in position finally to uh, casting Return out of here. I think he's going directly to Sherlock, or maybe not. Did he not make it to the... Um, he's got something else he's still doing. I wonder what it is. Not sure, because I think he's got everything he needs. Um, he literally just picked up a rainbow to drop, so I'm not sure what he's... He's only got chainmail on the looks of it, so I'm not 100% sure what the play is here. And meanwhile, EMP grinding on an axe knight with the sword. Um, that's probably better than the red dragon, maybe. If you were doing it with hurt more, 100% for sure. But he's going to have the experience lead whenever he gets sent back and have that armor, so unless F. Coughlin is able to get a whole ton of experience on the way down himself when he gets the armor, or somehow goes and gets everything in one dive, we still have to say there's a significant advantage in that top race to EMP right now. Yeah, most definitely. He's taking these Axe Knights down with, you know, two or three swings, losing very little in the HP, so he's able to probably pick up 15 here and get a significant boost uh, and say, you know what, this is going to be a go as soon as we get up. And all these reds that keep getting in Holmes way in Sherlock is put him already halfway to the next level. We might see just an absolute, like, murderous level at level 18. But he's got all of that agility. He's actually, I think, a favorite to run from everything now, um, except for the DL2, which I'm not sure why anyone would really do that anyway. And with the hurt, Bingo's in back home. But I don't think he's too worried. That uh, level gave him some pretty tasty confidence there. Uh, he's still going to need at least 15 because, you know, again, the stats just aren't there attack-wise as we can see for Holmes. Now, I guess Man wasn't able to get the last chest here in Mountain. I didn't notice that for sure, so uh, having to make a special trip back in. And maybe that's why Wraith Knight, not something you even want to see now. But finds the cursed belt, gets the bad news, and is out. 
except yeah. to cast a spell. Yeah, and that's something you never want to see when you have to go back down for a last single chest, and it's really nothing that's going to help you. Um, so we have Holmes now finally the decision for him to see which direction he decides to go first. And of course, watching the uh, the top race up here, the experience lead has shifted to F. Coughlin. However, we do know that the gear and knowledge is in EMP's favor right now. He looks like he's just trying to do 15. Uh, yep, so he's in that same grind. He's just going to try and do that. Uh, meanwhile, F. Coughlin still has to die for the armor, so there's that little bit of bad luck for him. So Holmes getting his armor and immediately getting out. I'm going to go back to the castle, get those uh, stats refilled, and probably charge right back in, not worrying about an extra level at this point. Um, what we've seen on his side is, I guess, maybe he's going back for another level. He did see quite a difficult Sherlock, and might want to just snag 18 before he messes with him. It's a very quick jaunt down here, and I think it's, what, two enemies to go? Something like that. And, then, and I mean, it's going to play out if he gives him any even inkling of a little bit of defense uh, or agility, it'll help him out in the long run. He'll be able to uh, do that little bit more that he's looking for. Uh, meanwhile, Kaufman is heading back down there again to go grind out on the drag track. I would not be surprised if F. Kaufman has it in his head to try to do this in one go. We know it's going to be challenging. If he goes at 17, uh, if, if that's the level he goes, he's at 15 is a borderline level. He might try, if, if he tries to dive and grind, he's probably going at 16. But if we see him continue to go, he's going to try everything in one, I think. Yeah, we've got both EMP and Coughlin at level 15 now. The stats are there, just not the attack stat. But we all know that comes within the next level or two. Yeah, and at this point, we have three runners on Red Dragons, all at different parts of the race. Mand is now diving into Sherlock, and there we see level 18 on home side. 3174, that three attack, I think, saves you another heal more at the end here. Uh, he's got to think about it a little bit, though, because that doesn't feel super comfortable. The MP, actually, I think, is that another heal more's worth of MP, too? Yeah, and looking at it, I mean, he's really in control here. 130-something HP, he can use the Death Necklace and have a, uh, a pretty decent shot here. Um, I think your Fairy Wad fired up a little bit, too, just to add insult to injury if you think you might need it. But 134, I think you're in good shape on this team. And he's going to buy herbs. How about that? And not forget, he just didn't need, didn't need them before. But makes sense. <laughs> get those out of the way. You, you want every little bit against reds because it's really hard to get by them even with 93 agility without taking hits here or there. And we've already seen that at least in zone 2 you have some of both. Uh, they're, they're in every floor, so it's, it's not something you want to take for granted. Most definitely, and we're getting closer and closer to 16 up here at the top of the race. Uh, these boys are kind of keeping neck and neck. Yeah, the deciding factor in what we see between EMP and F. Coughlin might be the level they go on. Um, as uh, some of our other racers might tell you, EMP is generally very aggressive when it comes to go level. So 16 with the armor, he might try it. Yeah, and we saw 16 on Coughlin, he got that big agility boost of 10 points there. It's going to help his defense out a little bit. Uh, he looks like he's pulled off of the grind and maybe heading down to the armor at 16. It's also possible he just got that Magic Wyvern one step off of the tile. And EMP is sitting right back onto it too, so... Uh, looks like we're going to be here at least until 17. Mand is doing his first dive into Charlotte, trying to get that armor. Looks like he's uh, just running from whatever he can run from. I always like to mention it's a, an interesting strat to uh, when you get into Charlotte. A lot of people will fight early and run late, but sometimes it makes sense to run early and fight late when you know you're comfortable getting to that 
the armor or whatever it is that you need. Yeah, no, uh, I hate to say it, but there's no way man can do a uh, a drop in DLT victory here. He's going for the armor, and that looks like all he's in there for. Yeah, at this point, man would need something considerably bad to happen on home side to, to be able to catch up, just because the, uh, the lead here has been grown out so far. Uh, the exploration was just there for homes and uh, timely leveling and it's just been able to uh, kind of take hold of this race. Meanwhile, our top runner still on that grind, still heavy into it. Uh, getting closer and closer to 17. I bet you 17 you may see an, uh, an attempt. If not, it'll be 18 definitely uh, for Coughlin, but I think EMP might try to be aggressive on 17. Yeah, and we still don't know what F. Coughlin's going to do, if he's going to try at 17 and then just run through. Uh, from what we've seen, I don't think there's any difference in the stats that matter for this, but it'll be plus two heal mores uh, to you know, the normal level that people go, so he might do it. Um, now we see EMP going through and grabbing those herbs the same way that Holmes did a little bit ago. It's also the theoretical possibility that EMP swings on the way down for the last level. Um, considering he has the armor and he's seen the reds, that wouldn't surprise me if he goes with that strap. Yeah, and that's that's definitely the big difference right now is that armor being a factor. EMP is able to get it on a single dive with no issues, uh, very, very little distractions, and now it's going to pay off the stage for him right here. And meanwhile, Mr. Holmes is on the bottom floor. Uh, let's see if he can continue to have a, the luck that he's got. I'm hoping he can get away from this and maybe initiate this DLT shot here. Yeah, is this the appropriate time to mention that the Golem is the easiest thing to run from in Sherlock? The, you are a favorite if you have 24 agility to run from a Golem. Uh, to answer chat, I think the advantage that Holmes got was he sat on the grind a lot longer. He's been two levels ahead of everyone almost this entire race. And because of that, hasn't taken really any bad deaths in the overworld. You know, at least yeah. past the uh, the beginning part. Sorry, Edge. Oh, no, you're good. I was going to say one more Axe Knight try to get in the way there. But it looks like he's going to slap the Death Necklace on immediately and go for it. Yeah, in the situation he is in right now, he is a huge favorite. I don't think he's lost any resources on the way down, any heal mores. So, you know, save time, put on the death necklace. Don't worry about healing in this first fight, and just uh, heal more when your hit points go too low. Of course, I say that he uses an herb. But he gets the obligatory stop spell to allow him that heal, so not terrible. Now let's see if he does it again. And while this is happening, Fred Coughlin is diving, going out of his way, taking about 10 extra steps to avoid that 4 damage. I feel like he's going to try to do an all-in-one here, so it's entirely based on run luck whether or not this works. I mean, he's got everything he needs at this point. It, it would be an amazing thing to see a complete dive for the armor and dive for the uh, DL2 fight. Let's see what happens when this progresses even further. But we have... Holmes, who is right now on the DL2 fight, looking pretty good so far. Yeah, he's rolling 8 to 17, and I think we've seen a 9 and a 10. Uh, makes it feel really good. Well, there's the 17, there we go. We get, we get that bounce back, little rubber band action. There's another single digit nine, but he gets a physical for 27. I'm, I'm always loving it when the Dragon Lord just decides to be a little physical and hits you on the low end for the physicality. A 16 and 17. Yeah, rolling well. 
Uh, it looked a little weird at the start, but you know his hit points or his damage isn't that high, and I think he had heal more to spare. So this is just a matter of uh, menu right, avoid disaster scenarios, don't take risks. Well, man has his armor. Looks like he's going to check the spike out, see what he's got there. Meanwhile, well thrown up 97 uh, as far as Holmes goes. Another 11 there puts him up there to 108. One thirty by my count. One twenty. There we go. Yeah, he's uh he's got a few more swings. He's got plenty. I think this is free as long as he just he's very careful of what he does. Yeah, still in the lead. It is looking like on F Coughlin's side, he's really struggling to do this. I think he's going to try to take a level on the way down, uh, which means EMP going on his final dive right now is in charge on the top side. Holmes throwing out a hurt for uh, the memes. Unfortunately, it does not land. And there it is, all the way to 160. So, everybody get those GGs out in the chat for Mr. Dr. Holmes. He has taken him down and catches the win on his side of the race. Meanwhile, we have F. Coughlin making the dive as well as EMP making his final dive. This ought to be an interesting one, to say the least. And there he is, turning in the uh, the ball of light to the king, letting him know that he spanked the dragon lord and finishes with that final time of one hour, fifteen minutes, and three seconds. GG. You know, and I tell you what, this did not feel like you know a, a, a fat. I won't say this was a jet sea, but it didn't feel like the fat sea that it was turning out to be. Um, and joining us here in the booth is. Dr. Mr. Holmes, congratulations on that win, man. Thanks very much. That was a delightfully pleasant scene. Can y'all hear me? Oh, yes, most definitely. Okay, so, great. So I guess my first question for you is, is, how did it feel finding that early grind and hearing him right there on the other side with at least two of the three best items you can buy? That was great. I mean, I was trying to get through there earlier, but I mean, I don't feel like it was that far out of the way, but definitely nice to coordinate it together with finding the cave to get the gold grind right away. Yeah, it just seemed like everything was going your way. You settled in on that early grind before anybody else did, uh, and it really paid out for you quite well. Um, man is still trying to get the armor. Uh, things are just kind of moving and shaking in his way, but you had a lot of things just completely move your way in the way it needed to go. Yeah, I, first of all, I was really annoyed with how my initial starting grind kept going. <laughs> I fought a ghost and I saw it had heal more. I'm like, okay, whatever. Then I fought another one and it was fine. And then it wasn't until the third fight that I saw it had hurt more, and then it kept hurt more me over and over. And that's all I saw. So as soon as I saw the uh, Axe Knights and the Star Wyverns and the Green Dragons, I was like, all right, all right, I'm sick of this. I'm just staying here until something happens. Yeah, there were a lot of pretty disgusting enemies close to that uh, zone that you were in. Uh, Blue Dragons had heal more. Uh, there's a lot of things that just really were not playing super nice at all, uh, with a lot of DL2s and a lot of hurt more thrown out there. But uh, yeah, you got a really nice shot on uh, on the DL there with uh, the the stop spells and just the physical attacks uh, on DL1. It kind of made it pretty easy for your DL2 fight. Yeah, I mean he back attacked because he's a jerk, but whatever. I'm just glad the armor was in Sharlock because I made a. A poor assessment. For some reason, I thought the armor had to be in coal when I found it. And then when I saw the fairy flu, I was like, oh, jeez. Because I had three overworld chests left unexplored. So, I mean, I kind of put all my eggs in one basket. And I was like, well, I can at least fight stuff on the way down. So if the armor's not there, it's not a complete waste of time. But thankfully, it was in... Well, the first chest, it didn't even make me go to the vanilla spot, which I had a feeling it would, but 
Yeah. I mean, it was annoying, but it wasn't too bad. And I got a little lucky, and hooray! Well, I mean, there you go. We were definitely questioning, uh, you know, the, the miss of those three chests. And it's like, is he going to feel like, you know, this was the play seven versus three? And it, again, once again, it played out in your favor and uh, played out exactly how you needed it to. Meanwhile, EMP at 17 at the spike tile for the axe knife. He's getting ready to go in and start his final shot here. Yeah, right. EMP. Ahead. Sorry, uh, I was gonna say EMP hasn't been held up by anything yet in the Sherlock, so he's coming in full resource. It's gonna be a massive favorite. Sorry, go ahead, Holmes. Well, that's well. I'll comment on that. That's ridiculous. My first Sherlock dive, I had four red dragons and armored knights just in that little turnaround room. I was like, oh boy, <laughs> I'm not trying this again until I'm leveled up. But I was going to say, um, the reason I skipped those three chests is because I had seen a second cursed belt, and I was like, oh, I've already got the death necklace, and I just totally blanked that the fairy flute was a thing that could be there. So once I got the fairy flute, it was like, ah, oh, do I really want to go back and dive the grave? Do I really want to go to the tablet cave? Well, I've got everything. Let's just go to Sherlock. And it was stressful times. Yeah, I wasn't surprised that you skipped Deep Grave, but when you went into Tablet and left, that seemed odd, so it does make sense then that you just didn't remember the flute, which honestly, I think we all kind of try to forget about the flute. Yeah, I mean, who thinks the flute will be in coal? I mean, that's just ridiculous. Well, so far, looking at the race we got going up on the top of the screen here, uh, F. Coughlin is really starting to catch up. EMP just starting his DL2 fight. Had a little bit of toughness on that DL1, but got right where he needs to be now. Um, this is going to be a close one for these two. And also, man, trying to finish up here, I think this is a... Uh, my opponent is finished, and I'm going to do everything I can to uh, try to win on this level right now sort of dive, because he is holding back those heal mores sticking to nine, which even in itself feels like it would be a real outside shot to get. There's always the Swaggin' Lord. Never, never discount the Swaggin' Lord. True. And it's also possible he really just wants to fight the Axe Knight down here, but I don't think, I don't feel like that's it. We did see uh, EMP uh, physical down that Axe Knight like for five, five kills in a level, if I remember right. Oh man, so it looks like my, just looking at my stats screen, if you have it on your restream, I got an, ab I knew I got a lot of critical hits against the Red Dragon. I, w I wonder if the crits count an excellent dodge. I wonder if that would... I believe add. they do. I think, I think it counts for both, like it doesn't one or the other. But yeah, so. my, looks like my crit rate was better than 1 in 16, which is frankly just ridiculous. True, and even even after you factor out all of the uh, the ones that you did on the Dragon Lord, which couldn't possibly crit. Um, you know, oh, as... that's interesting. Yeah, 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 gotcha. True. And then, uh, that's kind of the uh, the theme of this uh, year's tournament. Uh, when in doubt, just crit everything. Well, Coughlin is caught up. He's at the spike tail. And EMP is closing in on the hopefully close to end of his year. Correction. He got it. He's done. He's heading home. Yeah, GG's out for EMP. I think there was significant parts of this race where if you were looking at it, a four-person race, it felt like he had a, a command over the exploration. It was just the leveling at the end, I think didn't quite get it but uh, he does win his race and that's what matters and there we go finished with a final time waiting for Gwalen of one hour 22 minutes and 50 seconds big GG's for EMP there uh, we're probably going to see Coughlin finish this fight he's already there you see uh, I guarantee he's one of those guys I'm just going to finish this battle guy he did lose one heal more, but he's still in very good shape. The uh, I think there's somewhere north of like plus two or plus three heal mores coming into this fight at level 18. 
Were the strength HP folks going to level earlier than I was, out of curiosity? Or are they the same? Well, EMP won on 17, so he did manage that, but yeah. I th think he did a uh, dive before you, and it didn't work out. But maybe we can ask him, because uh, I believe he has just joined us in chat. EMP, can you hear us? Testing, testing, one, two. We can hear you. Hey, GG, sir. Uh, what your first reflection, your first thoughts after you finished? Or can you hear me? I can... Hold on, let me turn my game sound off because I'm having a hard time hearing over it. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Uh, can you hear can. us? Yep. I can hear you. So the question that was posed, uh, what are your initial reflections on this, uh, this seed after finishing it? Uh, like this did? Well, it wasn't all that bad. All the endgame enemies had hurt. Except for the stone man. I think he had hurt more. That is correct. I mean, it wasn't the prettiest Sherlock in the world, but I mean, <laughs> even a red dragon with 50%, maybe it was even like 25% hurt, I'm not exactly sure. It's still kind of annoying. I don't think the Armored Knight had hurt, or if it did, it never used it against me. Yeah, that, that middle zone, was it all Armored Knights? Except for, I think, one red, red dragon? <laughs> I think there might have been a golem hiding in, in that zone as well. I... I got a uh, nice uh, sample size of those enemies, I can say that. Yeah, the yeah, Armored yeah. Knights, I was going to say, the Armored Knights decided not to do anything, but you had the uh, Golems who had 50% sleep, 50% hurt, and they were not afraid to use it. Yeah, were I they think... immune to stop spell? I never got the opportunity to try. I tried once and only got, and I succeeded with a stop spell kill on them. So 100% success rate confirmed. <laughs> yeah, and then of course, GG's the chat for uh, F. Coughlin. He just finished off his DL2 fight. He will be probably, be, hopefully, be joining us here in the booth here shortly. Um, so where does this leave you guys? You guys still have a few races to go within your uh, your brackets and whatnot. Um, what does that kind of leave you as far as the, the planning for the next piece of part going forward? Uh, I mean, I'm just, I'm just having fun. I'm definitely taking things a lot more. It's a lot, making things a lot less stressful. I'm not hyper focusing on everything, so I'm just having fun racing everybody. I. I'm just excited to kind of interact with all the new people who come in the tournament every year and just just play the races, whatever happens, happens, and try and build the community some more. That's my number one priority. These one-on-one -on -one races still kind of hype me up a bit. Yeah, I, I'll be lying if I say I wasn't getting nerves at the Dragon Lord fight, even, even though I knew I was going to win, but like win the fight. Still, it's still there, but I've been trying to minimize it. <laughs> Definitely has been known to stress me out seriously in the past. Yeah, I had some high yeah. rolls early in my fight. Right, and so you uh, ended up going at level 17. What was your agility at that? 85. Oh, okay, so that was right after the big agility level then. Okay, right, right, right. I was on a strength agility build, so I think I was at like 92, which was kind of nice. And I think we're going to see Man finally go for his final dive here. Uh, looks like he's running from everybody that he can. And hopefully he'll be able to get down there and get this book to rest and have this one in the books for himself. Chat pointing out that, uh, and I'm, I'm just going to repeat what Betastrep said here, that except that a lot of the game is RNG once you have the knowledge. 
And I, I feel like that's something that uh, last year I didn't feel, and this year I, I totally do. Like any race, uh, most of the people in this tournament can beat anybody else, and it's a matter of dealing with what happens and, uh, you know, understanding that there's so many things we can do, but the game might just say no to our current strats. Yeah, the parody, the parody of competition is just insane. And we do have an official forfeit from Mand. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to be joining us, but uh, he did mention that he's not sure how a Sherlock with five different hurt mobs could be this bad. Welcome to DWR. And he is also skipping out on uh, the interview, so uh, you'll just have to uh, ask him any of your questions directly if you have any. I'm kidding, don't, don't bother him. Join the <laughs> stream and ask him, I suppose. Yeah. As is their right, I just want to point that out. Especially after frustrating Sherlock, I, I definitely understand that decision and respect it completely. Yes, yeah, so a grand total of zero people were able to get the armor and go in one dive. But I think everyone might have had it in their mind at some point. That first zone just kind of punched everybody in the face. With the 107 attack, I actually specifically chose, I know I'm doing two dives here. Okay, I actually thought you weren't because you were running from everybody, but then it kind of changed by about second floor, so. Maybe it was just the enemies that you had seen that made me think that. But, but yeah, we're gonna, Mand has forfeited, but he said he's just gonna kind of finish this at his own pace. So, um, we, we may or may not get to see him finish this up uh, while we're still going. Um, but why have you both here? Uh, do you guys have any races coming up that you want to attract our attention to? So I think the only one I have scheduled is not for like eight days, but I might be scheduling a race with Ratliff later this week. So, I mean, all depends on what the schedule of other races look like, but I mean, there's no shortage of races. So pretty much any day of the week, you have your pick of three or four awesome races. Yeah, I don't have any more scheduled yet. <laughs> all right, well, sorry to put you on the spot then if uh, nothing was scheduled. I just like to give everyone an opportunity to you know, what is it? Follow your favorite racer, sort of thing. See, if you if you follow everybody, then you, you'll always have someone online. That's a good strategy. True, that is a good way to go. As we have, I think, Nightbot just uh, advertised for us here in the booth. And now uh, Schmite giving us the, uh, the deets about everyone who's in the race. Definitely try to follow everyone. And, uh, you know, watch them on your own. You don't have to necessarily watch our channel, but also watch this channel. Sometimes I have 10 tabs open when I'm trying to follow the races right now. So uh, definitely can be a, a little stressful, but it's great. So is this the last race of the night? Is there another one coming after this? Uh, there is, I believe, a vodcast scheduled to happen. I don't know if they've confirmed who it's going to be yet. And I think we still might be looking for like one more volunteer. So uh, we will get the exact information there. I don't know if we're gonna just going to close down and go directly once we're done here. If that's the plan. I initially said it was, I initially saw something around midnight. But uh, yeah, if Math Girl is going to be doing comms, are you doing the restream too? So they might need a tracker then? Is that what you're suggesting? Uh, no, we actually have one of those as well. We're good now. I just hadn't checked the updates. So, uh, And the race will be Beta Strep versus Up 2 NG. This one happened a couple of days ago, but as my memory serves, it was an extremely good race. So stay tuned. I define good as it was worthwhile watching. Uh, 
All right, I think we lost Holmes. Uh, EMP, do you have any last thoughts about the race or anything else that's going on on the screen right now? Uh, not really. All right, well, we do see Man. He's made it all the way down here, losing zero resources. Um, you know, all it does is taking the forfeit to then just suddenly have Sherlock decide to be free for you. Uh, but here we go. Also, the 85 agility, that agility boost at 17 really helped. But going into his Dragon Lord fight, uh, we will see this. Uh, as long as he, again, menuing correctly, uh, making good decisions, this should be solidly in his favor. Speaking of that, though, he is not put on the death necklace. Oh, there we go. Uh, now we do see the death necklace equipped. Man is a little nervous going three attacks in, but uh, that should, again, put him kind of the advantage. Without that, it's a lot scarier fight because he'd only be looking at 121 attack power, and the difference between 131 and 121 is something like seven rounds of uh, fights. Yeah, I think at this point you just see the careful menuing and everything going going down as it's going to go here. Uh, he'll get this one. He'll get it in the books. Unfortunately, the forfeit uh, he took, but you know, it's again like you said, it's nothing like the forfeit of the game. Be like, all right, here's a free run. Yeah, and some people might be self conscious about possibly holding things up. That's not something you ever need to worry about. Speaking on behalf of chat to uh, everyone else, like maybe an hour plus, but. I think we're all still readily entertained, and we want to see Man finish this off. Well, oh, I've uh, I've been a I've been a part of the uh, the few slog fests in this one so far, but I think Man's got this one in the bag. He's just gotta, like I said, the menu's just gotta be careful, and he's he's super careful with it right now. So this should be uh, should be a number. We should be able to take this out. There. Yeah, he's rolling 7 to 15. We've seen at least one 7. Makes you a little nervous, but um, just swinging through at this point. There's an 11. That's nice. Get a 12. I think, if my math is right, we broke 130. I'm a little bit off on the numbers, I'm sure, but I think we're possibly one swing away at this point. Yeah, it looks like he's either going to do this on the on his next swing or on the final swing. There it is. GG's in chat for Mand, who is finishing up here uh, in just a moment. Again, he has technically forfeited, so we don't have any official final time, uh, except whatever we might see on the screen. But uh, really started out uh, fairly well, just wasn't able to keep up with the experience in Holmes and then had some issue with the exploration there at the end. Now, it did serve Holmes' benefit that he... You know, the, the, the mess up on the flute and Cole didn't ultimately hurt him, actually helped him uh, quite a bit in saving the time from Tablet and Grave. But uh, yeah, man just wasn't able to keep up with the experience and just had a few unfortunate deaths and it messed up the exploration to where I just wasn't able to keep up. But uh, GG's to him for finishing out the race. And I mean, kind of looking at all this, this is a fantastic race run by four very good runners. Um, and, you know, I cannot wait to see kind of where the rest of this goes for us this time. It's, it's turning pretty spicy right now. And kind of looking forward to, to what these races mean. EMP with this win 
Uh, I mean, if he wins out, he uh, he'll get the buy in his group. He's he doesn't have the most wins yet, but he is what you would assume to be in first place. And then uh, Mand and Holmes are now tied at two and one in uh, the Red Slime group, and there's still quite a few scenarios that could happen there. Um, and uh, yeah, they both went out. They are both going on as well. It's definitely going to be fun to see how the rest of this plays. Cause like I said, everybody, you know, you know, it was said earlier that you know anybody can beat anybody on a given day. It's just going to be, uh, you know, how the, how the whole thing just plays out in general. Uh, we've seen some upsets. We've seen some really good races thus far. Absolutely, there's been a few new players that have really surprised people. I don't. I think some people might not be familiar with Secret Agent Man if you've only watched the summer tournaments, but he did participate in the Bucket Brigade and Winter League and uh, did fairly well in both. Um, and uh, to see him, you know, in this part is no surprising. It's not surprising, but to lose a, a race to um, Dr. Mr. Holmes, who again is, I think, the only four-time champ in Dragon Warrior history, you know, you, you feel bad, but you don't really feel bad because... He's one of the toughest opponents there is. Well, I think looking at everything, we've had a really good night of racing. Uh, we had a, a few races earlier today that were really good. So again, you had a chance to look at those. Go back, check them out. Uh, we do have a restream that's going to possibly be happening for a podcast here in just a little bit. So definitely check that out. It was a really good race to kind of check on both guys' screens and just watch as I'm like eating popcorn and whatnot. But it was a good race. Yeah, absolutely. And these, uh, these quad races are always interesting in that you have so many different people to compare to at the same time. But uh, really, EMP and F. Coughlin came down to the wire. And uh, the, the decision to dive earlier um, probably ultimately benefited EMP a little bit more. But honestly, uh, it was so close all throughout. And it was just a matter of if, um, I don't know, if, if uh, 17 had given a bit more in stats, we might have seen F. Coffin be able to do everything in one go. But that Sherlock just, there was no way. So, um, yeah, the way it looks, I think we're going to cut here in just a minute or two. And uh, then the stream will be back up at the top of the hour. So uh, you don't have to do anything. You can leave the stream on. You can go, you know, grab some snacks, uh, tuck the kids in bed if for some reason they're still awake. And, uh, you know, take care of yourself. Yep. And as always, guys, make sure that you guys give these races a follow. Uh, and, and a check out because they do a lot more than just running the randomizer. They play a lot of other things as well. So give them all a check out, especially everybody else here in the booth with me, my uh, co-commentator, Aaron, YouTube, you, Math Girl, who is on our restream, and then our two trackers, Keyglas and Betastrap as well. 